Dr. Charles Epps is a professor of modern grass maintenance technology at the South Harmon Institute of Technology. He first attained fame in the scientific community for inventing the space shuttle in 1973. He has multiple PhDs in wood carving, civil war reenacting, the history of everything, physical astronomy, and dog repair. Before his acclaimed invention of the space shuttle, Dr. Epps joined a professional leaf imprinting and preservation team. He rose quickly to a leadership position and guided them for most of the rest of his 64-year career. Once, while on vacation in Peru, he decided he no longer needed to take his malaria medication because he was better than everyone else. As a result, he contracted malaria. After this brush with death, he set about to make finding the universal origin his life's goal. Professor Hansraf Blom Grushenka graduated from high school at age three. At age five, when he graduated from MIT, he was awarded his Bachelor of Science in Metacognitive Psychophysiological Neurophysics with a minor degree in Exotic Foreign Cuisine. He acquired his master's degree in Management and Business at age six. At the ages of seven, eight, nine, nine and a half, and ten, respectively, he was awarded PhDs in Astronomy, Cosmology, Aeronautical, Astrological Engineering, Automotive Design, and Nursing. He has worked for the past 50 years at a large undercover government organization researching the use of butterfly feces as a nuclear power source. He also likes canoe trips. Dr. Arthur Vandele is an esteemed anthropologist from Mars, Alabama. After earning his associate's degree in anthropology from the Community College of Mars, Alabama, Dr. Vandele joined the production team of the Broadway musical Cats, where he quickly rose from gaffer to production manager. After a brief stint in Italy, where he was able to prove Newton's laws of gravity false, he joined the research team at Caltech and spearheaded the creation of the internet. Dr. Vandele's hobbies include collecting antique toenail clippers, chess boxing, and golfer startling. Ferguson dropped out of high school in 10th grade when his IQ was tested at 672. He spent the next 12 years in Vegas counting cards where he made over $400 million. Ferguson then became a recluse and was seen only five times over the next 27 years naked in the Himalayas. He has of late rejoined society, although he can still only survive with roots and berries, and he has helped his old friends discover the Big Bang. He also wanted me to say that he likes turkeys and cedar trees. As was typical of a Saturday afternoon, Hans and Charlie were playing war, drinking cards, and doing some occasional intense scientific research. Suddenly, they had an idea. So they called up their buddies, who were fortunately on speed dial, and told them their thoughts. Dr. Vandele, yes. I understand. Yes. We're searching for the Big Bang. Come at once. Yes. To headquarters on Headquarters Island. Okay. We'll see you there. You have to take the helicopter. Ferguson. Look, I understand that you're in Jamaica right now. I can hear the background music. No, 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 don't. No, look, the cat can wait. Just come to the secret island as soon as you can. Yes, yes, we found the Big Bang, or at least we'd like to look for it. We have a great idea where to look. We've been reading Scientific American. Good luck. The four scientists were soon doing initial background research to learn whatever they could about the Big Bang. Charlie did a significant amount of work during his foray and gave the group a valuable intellectual edge in their pursuits. He was interviewed afterwards and this is what he came up with. Dicky, 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 Dicky. This phone call really cemented the discovery of the Big Bang as uh, an event in time that created our universe. After completing their initial research, the scientists were ready to leave. They took off. The voyage out of the atmosphere was intense. A little turbulence would not soon defeat these four brave adventurers. After breaking out of Earth's final atmospheric layer, they reached the depthless black of outer space. Their journey had just begun. It was somewhere out by Galaxy G14 that they found signs of the Big Bang. Dr. Arthur Vandele discovered what he later called the cosmic microwave background radiation. When interviewed afterwards, he was asked to explain a little bit about what the CMB was. Now we have Dr. Vandele live from Physics Today. During the first few days of the universe, 
despite this incredible discovery, they still had not found the Big Bang. It did give them a clue, however, as to where it was, and they now knew where they had to go. This was it. They had finally arrived. After landing on a seemingly solid mass void of space, they began the final part of their journey on foot. They crossed many vast expanses of nothingness that seemed to be devoid of all recognizable life. Supplies were running low. They had to ration and share their last remaining foodstuffs. And so, despite everything, the four pioneers continued onward and ventured forth to space's last and final frontier. Despite certain tensions running high within the group, they persevered. It was here that Dr. Grishenka began to make his miraculous discoveries. He noticed a fluctuation in the standard patterns of time between vehicle and foot travel. The rules of Euclidean geometry seem... As the day pressed on, they came closer and closer to the origins of the universe. They descended into a dark abyss and knew that they were nearing the end. And then Ferguson spotted what might be the Big Bang, and he called his comrades over to investigate. At last, they had found it. Their approach seemed to have triggered something. With hopes and emotions high, they waited. Suddenly, the Big Bang, bang. Suddenly, as the universe was expanding before his eyes, Ferguson observed the following details, which he later shared with Physics Today. The universe started as a singularity. The uh, early phases are hard to determine because of the breakdown of physical laws under those extreme conditions. After 10 to the negative 35 seconds, the first phase transition occurred and the universe entered uh, cosmic inflation or exponential growth, after which it consisted of quark gluon plasma. So just to stop there, how long would you say 10 to the negative 35 seconds is? 10 to the negative 35 seconds is that fast. That's really fast. That was really fast. Yes, 10 to the negative 35 seconds is one with 35 zeros in front of it with a decimal point in front of that. So that's really not that much time at all. No, it so was we're talking very, about, very little time. We're talking about the creation of the universe in very, very little time. It went from being nothing to being almost everything. Yes, because very, very the whole universe was like that. Like that. Really, really small. All in one thing called singularity. When it decided that it wanted to leave and break apart, it did so very, very quickly. How Thank fast? you, Ernest. Very fast. I see. 10 All to the right. negative 35 seconds. That's fast. a lot of seconds. No, it's not a lot of seconds. So after that initial period of expansion, what happened next in the universe? Next, the process we call baryogenesis happened. But it would seem, however, that matters quickly spiraled out of control. The four scientists, recognizing the unimaginable power of the rapidly expanding universe, knew they were in trouble. The joy of their discovery was soon replaced by an abject fear for their lives. In a last-minute, desperately calculated decision, they decided to flee the scene. <laughs>